Right, now we're going to cut everything out. Make sure everything under our merged pixel layer is off. Make sure the pen tool is selected and make sure we have selected our bottom curve. We want to turn our curve into a selection using the selection tool. So just hit selection and there are the marching ants. As I created this curve, I know this selection is the horse, but I want to cut out the surrounding areas, the uh, sky. So select and invert pixel selection. The areas surrounding the statue are now selected. So I just press delete and goodbye sky. The curve layer automatically disappears, so I move to my next curve. Make sure my pen tool is selected. Select the curve. Click on selection to turn it into a selection. I don't need to inverse it this time as I already have background selected. So I just press delete. Move to the next curve. There it is, and selection, and hit delete. Next curve, selection, hit delete. And next curve, and select, and then delete. And next curve, the last one, selection, and hit delete. There we go. Now our pixel layer only contains the horse and the rider and the plinth. Excellent. Right, next we're going to refine the edges of our selection so they're not so harsh and look more natural. Make sure our pixel layer is selected. Choose the magic wand tool. Make sure your tolerance is low. Mine's at 20, which will be fine for this image. Ensure we're in add mode. Select in some space. And select in all of the little spaces around the horse and don't miss these little tiny spaces just here whoops do that one again there we go right in the hole we have all of our holes selected one two three four five six that's it again at the moment we have the areas around the horse selected but we want to select the horse so go to Select and Invert Pixel Selection. Choose Select and Feather. Here just type in the value of 4 and hit Apply. Now the edges of our selection will be nice and smooth. So do Control and C and Control and V to copy the selection into a new layer. Turn off our selection and delete the layer below like so. As you can see our new layer has a nice blended edge. This nice soft blended edge will make it look much more realistic against backgrounds. Feathering the edge like this is one of the secrets to making cutouts look more convincing. Great we're on the last stretch now so uh, save our work. It's time to add a dramatic background. With our second layer selected, go to Layer and New Fill Layer. Give it a nice deep red colour, a nice dark deep red. I think the horse and rider will stand out really well on that. That's fine. We'll rasterize that so that we can manipulate it. Add a nice vignette, like so. Move the vignette layer onto the newly created background layer. Reduce the exposure all the way down. Hardness down to about there. That'll be fine. A bit less. Yep, that's it. Scale about hmm, there. Um, yep, that's nice. Make sure our vignette layer is selected. Grab a brush and make it black so we can erase some of the vignette off the vignette layer. Increase the size of our brush nice and 
large and start erasing the vignette from around the plinth to change the shape. I don't want it to be circular, I want it to be more of an oval shape, I think. That's looking nice. Very good. Okay, that's not bad, but I think I'm going to go back to the vignette and just reduce the scale of it so that there's more black around by the horse's head. Yep, that's okay. I think that's starting to look very nice indeed. I just want to add a few finishing touches, just two or three. Select our top pixel layer. Create a clarity filter and bump the clarity right up to the top. And this isn't for the horse and rider, this is just for the plinth. So I'll make sure I've got my paintbrush selected and a black colour and opacity of 100. A nice big brush. And I'm going to use the brush to wipe the clarity completely off the horse and rider. I just want it to affect the plinth to make it look a little more defined. And make sure the clarity layer is attached to our pixel layer so it doesn't affect anything else. Now the clarity is completely wiped off the horse but the plinth has a little more definition. I think I'd like to create even more clarity in the plinth, even more definition by using the burn tool. So select the burn tool, 20% opacity is fine. Let's um, make sure we're on white, we're on burn, we've got shadow selected and just, here we go, just paint in some more detail, dark detail into the plinth. I think that looks great. I'm just going to enhance the colours a little bit more with a few select adjustments. I think I'll start with a colour balance and starting with the shadows. Okay, I think I'll start with the greens. They're not quite right. Does it need more? No, I don't think so. I think it actually needs less green. Yep, there we go. A little magenta. Yep, about minus 20-ish. And yeah, I think I'm going to go with that. That seems okay. And in the highlights, I'm going to maybe add a little red. About... Oh, about there and a bit of yellow yep I'm liking that even more yellow yep that's about it there and then lower the opacity right down I just want it to be a hint a hint just to add a little bit of interest to the image I think that's about right Okay, and make sure it's only affecting the horse and plinth and not the background. Very nice. I just want to bring the blues down a tad. They're a bit too much. So I think I'll use the HSL slider. And no messing about, go straight to the blues. Saturation down by about minus 50 or so. And bring down the luminosity because I want the blues to be darker. They are a little too light. I think about there, that's fine. Now the effect is a little too much so I'll bring the opacity down to about oh, there. Yep, that's it. Make sure we pop the HSL onto the actual image and not the background. And now I'm going to add some shadows and highlights. Pop them onto the actual image. 
And bring the shadows down and ooh, to around quite a lot really. There we go. And the highlights, not too much. I don't want to blow out the plinth. That's it. That's fine. Absolutely perfect. It's the little touches at the end that make all of the difference. Yeah, the shadows and highlights adjustment I just did is just a little much in places. So I'm going to grab a nice black brush, nice and soft, and erase it from just a couple of places. Here we go, just there and at the front of the horse. It's only subtle and slight, but it's these really tiny adjustments that can make a massive difference to the final image. And we're on the home straight. Get it? <laughs> I'm not happy with that background, so I'm going to make it a little less round. I think it would look better a little squared off or something. I think it needs something doing. I'm going to have a look at doing something with the vignette. Here we go. And scale down a tad and yeah that's better that'll do i quite like that at long last i think we're finished for the scope of this tutorial we're done we've got a nice image developed from a nikon raw file into something completely different from the image it started as very nice just one more thing, select the background, rasterize it. I think this background's gonna look better, a lot smoother. It looks a bit blobby, so I'm going to select the blur, Gaussian blur. Set a big value. Uh, the slider's not enough, so dragging on the actual image allows me to set an even bigger value. There we go. Huge, nice and smooth. Lovely. Wait for the blur to finish. Then add a brightness and contrast adjustment. First a little contrast to darken the outside and lighten the center. And then a little brightness because it will just look more dramatic. Okay, we're done, I promise. That background was just bugging me. I needed to do something with it. It was just not quite right, but now it's nice and smooth. Great. So let's uh, take a look at a before and after. Here we go. Before, after, before, after, before, after, and before, and after.